I gotta fluff my hair. I need some volume. Three, two, one, bro. Did it work? What's up, everybody? My name is Nick Murphy. I'm one half of the Brothers Murph, and this is Meta Game Minute Hair Hour. It's always Hair Hour with Nick Murphy. Some days is gonna go away, and it's gonna be a sad day for all of us. Let's be honest. Um, Meta Game Minute is a weekly segment where Mike or I talk about anything we want to talk about in gaming today. And today, I want to talk about games that were deeper than you thought they were gonna be, and. and they had more strategy than you thought they were going to be. They had more nuance than you thought there was going to be in this game. Because there's some games where you kind of expect that. Something like Scythe, a big kind of heavy-ish game. Got a lot going on. There's different player boards. There's different, different this. There's different that. You're expecting them to be very nuanced. Different things play off them. Anything with factions, I feel like, falls under that category where you're like, yeah... It makes sense that this is going to have a lot of staying power because there's going to be a lot of complexity and a lot of nuance between the different factions you can choose. Something like Empires of the North is something like that as well, or Imperial Settlers, any of these kind of like faction games where you're like, oh, this faction is good specifically at this, and I can play it in this specific way, and I know that this faction over here is good at this, so I need to make sure I'm doing... And there's a lot of that kind of stuff, and I feel like that is um, expected in those kinds of games. But then there's other games that are more nuanced in kind of different ways than you thought, like something like Teotihuacan, which is a kind of a bigger, heavier game that you expect to have like a lot of depth to, a lot of depth of strategy, but so much of it isn't so much about planning as it is just like understanding how the different action boards work with each other and how to get that like flow state of dice moving around the board making that work is a lot more deep and nuanced than at least personally I thought it was going to be in the first few times I played a game. A lot of times you play a game for one time, two times, three times, you're like, oh, I really like this. And then as you get farther and farther and farther into it, you're like, oh, wait, no, there's like this, all this weird connective tissue in here that I didn't know was there. And now I'm starting to see it like the matrix. And now I can start exploiting that and doing this and doing that. And I think that's a very fun part of gaming is, not only discovering new games, but games that you already know and then discovering the nuance and discovering the the depth of that game, especially when you didn't think the game was necessarily that deep. It might, might have been like deep enough, but you're like, oh, wow, this, this, this pool is a little bit deeper than I thought. Maybe I can go off the high dive in this one. And sometimes this can happen in a game you're really not expecting it. Like, say, something like Quest for Eldorado is one of my favorite racing games. Simple racing game, Reiner Knizia, where you have some deck building. You're basically building your deck, trying to get through this jungle to get to Eldorado. Perfect, great, it's a great little racing game. Simple little deck builder. I think a really great, like, gateway deck builder. Really, really wonderful. But there's this whole market where you buy cards, and if one of the slots of cards runs out of cards, you then get to bring down a new set of cards. And it turns out that the cards that you bring down are way more nuanced than you think, knowing like what the map is and knowing what kinds of land types you're going to have to go through and trying to get the things that you need while trying to deny the other, the other people the things that they need is, again, not the deepest game by any stretch of the imagination, but is more nuanced and deep than I thought it was going to be when at first it kind of just seemed like a more or less straightforward deck builder. And sometimes it can happen with like this sequel to a game, like something like Oceans as opposed to um, Evolution or Evolution Climate. Evolution Oceans is a lot more nuanced than the other two. The other two are very fun. I really like Evolution a lot, all of them. I think they're all great. But it's like more kind of like, okay, I, I'm building out this kind of this species and I might attack other ones. But in oceans, because it's in an ocean as opposed to like on land, it's all one big connected circle. And figuring out how like the symbiosis between all of your animals and all the other animals and trying to like leech off each other and trying to benefit from other people doing stuff is way, way more nuanced than it is in normal evolution and way, way deeper. I get it because oceans are deep. Uh, it's way deeper than I thought it was going to be. When I first played Oceans, I was like, oh, okay, cool. This is actually not that similar to Evolution. This is kind of cool and different. And I played it more and more. I'm like, wow, this is a lot more 
nuance than I thought it would be. This is a lot deeper than I thought it was going to be. And then you add in the deep cards, which add even more complexity and all this kind of stuff to it. And it, it just ended up being a, a pleasant surprise with how much there is kind of going on in that game. And that's just a couple of examples. There's probably tons more because even a game that you're expecting to be deep could be way deeper than you think it's going to be. So down in the comments, let me know games where this has happened to you, where you expected a certain kind of depth to the game and you found out that the bottom of that was way deeper than you thought. Or the opposite, where you thought this game was going to have a ton of depth, and then you kind of look at it and you're like, well, actually, I'm doing the exact same things every single time. Both of those can happen, and um, it, that's just part of gaming, really. So down in the comments below, let me know what games fall into those categories. What games are way deeper? What games are more shallow than you thought? And that's going to be it for me. Whether or not you love the shallowest of all shallow games, nothing wrong with a little filler, or the deepest games, some Vita Lacerda crap. You know, the more meta, the more better. Thank you so much for watching that video. If you want to check out last week's Metagame Minute with Mike, check out that video up there. And that video down there is going to be some that YouTube thinks you'll like. Give it a click. They're probably right. Robots know everything. They got your social security number. They got your fingerprints. They got your retinas. Just click on it, you know, click on it. Also, click that subscribe button because the robots want you to do that as well, which is always great. Hit that like button, share. You know what to do. We'll see y'all later.